Hey everybody, Guy from Ajax here. Welcome to the Daily 5 and 9 where I try to win 5 Splinterlands matches before I lose 5. And I record the matches in real time so you can hear my stream of consciousness thinking while I set and think through my strategy. Web3 strategy games like Splinterlands are the best and gamers need more of them to choose from. That's why I'm developing a Web3 basketball strategy game called Geeked Out Basketball. Links are in the description below. Now let's get rolling on today's matches. Rough day yesterday, 2 and 5. Let's see if I can follow that up with something better today. Did a little playing last night and rattled off some wins. So hopefully we'll put on a good showing for the for today's video. Kind of waiting. I think we're going to hit a point in in Web3 games. I think there's a lot of very compelling games in development right now. I'll talk a little bit about that during the next break. So we're going Noxious Fumes and Reverse Speed, uh, 18 mana. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, that, that, that Reverse Speed. Having a discussion with a, with a person on my previous video about how frustrating this can be. I'm going to lean into uh, Obsidian. Go with Heavy Magic. Obviously put my Fiend in here. We'll go with the Goblin Psychic in his one speed. We'll go with the Princess, stick her in there. And then I think I'll probably put a couple threes. Put a Hill Giant in the tank position. And we'll let Uraeus man the anchor spot. And we'll see what happens. All right, my opponent went death. It's gonna neutralize some of my magic. And then just two big, big uh, monsters in there, high health monsters, pretty smart. And Harclaw is going to avoid the poison. Pretty smart lineup by my opponent, if I'm being honest. Okay, I eliminated the Windicoo, but I believe it's going to be too little too late. Yeah, I'm not holding up on this one. All right, 0 and 1 to start the day. Let's jump right into battle number two. But I was saying, I think, um, oh wait, let's just jump in. It's moving fast today. So uh, target practice, so uh, range and magic are all going to hit their targets. And then low mana. Let's go right back to earth. And uh, no fiend because we only have odd number cards. We'll put the regal into the lineup. Are there any large mana monsters I want to work with? I have eight. I don't think so. I think I'm going to let the Jin Bajat Balaka. However you pronounce it, we'll put Uraeus in here, and then I'm going to put the um, the Morphoid and the Chaos Agent up front as warm bodies to <clears throat> absorb some attacks. Okay, my opponent went water. Probably put the Sethropod, I'm guessing, in the tank position. Yep. And then Tide Biter. Yeah, a pretty interesting lineup by my opponent. They stick the Chaos Agent in the anchor position to absorb my Uraeus hit. That's going to be very smart. No, actually, the Jin uh, eliminated that one. My Uraeus is gone. Okay, eliminated their tank. Ah, they poisoned my Regal. That's a bummer. Okay, I may be holding out on this one, though. Yeah, this is looking good. All right, 1-1. One, one. <coughs> Two magics to start the day. Excuse me. You guys hear me sipping my green tea? But I say, I think there are a lot of, a lot of games in development right now for Web3 that are going to be pretty strong. Uh, right now, obviously, there's been more focus on earning than playing. But... Um, I know firsthand there are a number of interesting game concepts that are that are in development. 
All right, so reverse speed, that pesky reverse speed, and we have, yeah, Earthquake. You know, let's let's go with, um, I like Life to counter Earthquake because they have some pretty decent uh, flying monsters. And we'll put Uriel in here. And let's get some archery monsters in here. I like pairing Uriel with the, the Crystal Smith for the healing. And then, yeah, I do like the Portal Spinner. And then we'll get the Fiend in here just to kind of keep the Harpy back in an offensive position. And um, let's see how it plays out. It's funny, me and it's blocked OP and on the other video from yesterday, we're talking in our thread about how frustrating reverse speed is. And then I get it for two of the first three battles on today, which is kind of funny. Okay, they, yeah, they're, they're getting a free hit on every monster with Divine Shield and the Resurrect. Pretty strong lineup again by my opponent. Basically, I just need Uriel to be <laughs> insurmountable, which doesn't look like that's going to happen. Maybe, though, if I can count on Earthquake taking out my opponent's monsters, that's pretty much what I need at this point. It's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. He has two flying monsters. Yeah, and then he's got the Scavenger with the Volgwing. Okay, eliminated one of the Flying Monsters. Looks like I'm going to pull this one off. The Self-Heal by Uriel is proving to be the difference. Yep, just a matter of time. Great. All right, I'm up 2-1 on the day. No shield and no healing. So we'll go straight offense. We'll lean into the life splinter. Actually, you know what? We're going to go death. Uh, curse Windaku. And I like pairing the Curse Windaku with the Queen of Crows to plus up the, the thorns. We'll put the Fiend in the second position. And let's get some... Some of the... You know what? I think there's another strong four. You know, not really. What do I have for two mana monsters? You know what? I'm going to go with the Soul Strangler. And then we're going to put the carry on shade here in the anchor position just to protect it you know yep, we're going to do this i like getting the chaos agent up front to absorb some attacks and we'll put the corpse fiend in the anchor to protect the soul strangler Okay, looks like I have higher ranked cards. No, no, it looks like my opponent has higher ranked cards. I was looking at the wrong row. We set relatively similar lineups. He's got the Silent Shiva in there though. Which I don't think I use that enough in death. I need to lean into that card a bit more. Okay. I think I'm overmatched. Yeah, my um, Queen of Crows being poisoned really hurt me. Yep, going to lose this one. Okay, 2-2. Two, two. Okay, 36 mana, extra shields, knockout. Let's lean into water, my favorite splinter. And I think we're going to go with my usual first three cards when I build out a water lineup that doesn't have unlimited mana. 
And then what do I want to supplement it with? I think I want to get the, put the River Hellendale in here. And I think I have another eight. You know what I can do? I'm going to put the Gin O'Shaughness. I kind of have a double tank going here. And then we're going to put the Fiend in the anchor position to protect my healer. Getting Slack messages from my real job. But anyways, I was saying, yeah, I think um, I think we're gonna see a lot more Web three games coming out soon that are actually fun games to play, and they're not simply focused on earning and um, the tokenomics component. I do think tokenomics does have a place in Web three games. They could become the game within the game for the game's most avid fans. But I think if you're going to draw a large enough fan base that it's actually, you know, going to be somewhat profitable for anyone at some point, I think you're going to have to have a game that's just simply fun to play first. That's actually what I'm focused on building with Geeked Out Basketball. Just meant to be a fun basketball strategy game that happens to have a, a tokenomic system attached to it. As well as the the cards are going to be NFTs and geeked out basketball as well. All right, let's hit a refresh. See if we can get this. Nope, looks like my opponent has either left or is taking their time. Okay, my opponent is going with Earth. A couple strong neutral monsters in there. Oh, my Demon Shark got attacked pretty hard with all the magic. At least I got one double hit out of him, a resurrection and a double hit. Kind of fortuitous, I put Jin O'Shaughness in the second position. Kind of gives me a pretty strong second tank against magic attack. He's definitely done his job absorbing all these hits. Great. Should be able... Oh, actually, no, I might have spoke too soon. I, uh, I could be in trouble. Yep, I think I'm done. Didn't have enough pure offense in there. I should have put the the fiend ahead of my monsters okay um bum, bum, bum. looks like i'm down two three on the day bummer thought i was gonna win that one okay pretty high man account pretty limited selection of splinters let's i haven't played any death yet today or i've only played one death let's lean into that i'm gonna try some high mana monsters We'll start with the wind coup. Oops, excuse me. And then we're going to go with the Jin Morant, the Queen of Crows, a couple of strong archers in the back. And then, yeah, I'm going to do, I'm going to go with the Night Ghoul. And then I, I can, look at this, I can go all large monsters and three pretty strong takes up front as well. The Night Ghoul is going to absorb all the hits, which is going to allow my two ranged attack in the back to avoid getting hit. And they both have, especially the Dampier Stalker, has pretty strong offense. And then Lyra the Dark has great speed. And with her snipe ability, we'll be able to take out um, the weaker monsters.
Okay. Looks like my opponent's leading into water. Has a pretty strong lineup. Fortunately, I only have one melee monster that's getting neutralized by the disintegrator. All right. So the ghoul did his job absorbing all those hits. And then the Jim Morant's also going to do the same and absorb a bunch of hits. So it's just going to be come down to how effective is my team going to be at withstanding this magic between Jin and and um, Narissa. This is going to be close because Jin's going to absorb his Jin O'Shaughness is going to absorb my magic. Ooh, great. Came down to the wire, but I won that one. All right. Need to keep go back and look. So two and one, two and two, two and three, three and three. They play the full nine today. Okay, 22 mana, no abilities. Back to basics. So you want to lean heavily into ranged and magic. I'm going to go ranged put the fiend in the second position. Put the magic reflector up front. Telecore Conjurer tends to get eaten through pretty quickly with no abilities. We're going to go Supply Runner, Magi of Chaos. Actually, nope. I'm going to hold off on the Magi of Chaos. And we're going to lean into the Prismologist. And then that leaves me space for a chaos agent up front you know what? i'm gonna go the scrapper up front and since there are no abilities i don't need to worry about protecting the the anchor position and hopefully my two range attacks can lay on the offense and win this one Hopefully my tank, oh yeah, my tank got eaten through pretty quickly. Hmm. Yep, not a great lineup for me. Pretty smart lineup for my opponent. All right, down three, four. Can I win two in a row to bring this home today? So knockout and sneak across everything. Let's go death. Let's put the Curse Windaku in the sneak position. Let's get some low mana melee monsters in here. There we go. I think I'll put the Crypt Beetle into my tank position. And then you know what? I've been burnt by the silent Shabby enough. I'm going to go right back to it here. I've seen my opponents have enough success with the Silent Chavi that I'm going to place it in my lineup. All right, it's like, uh, Carnage Titan gonna be double double hitting my anchor position. Interesting lineup by my opponent. Putting the Carnage Titan in the anchor. He's gonna be taking a lot of damage. Yeah, the thorns are getting him. Ooh. Can't be missing the my hits though. Yeah, he's gonna eliminate my silent Shavi, and I don't have much offense left now. Ah. Can't be missing when the opponent has backfire and an archer in that position. Great, great, uh, great unconventional lineup by my opponent. Okay, uh lost three to five today. Uh thanks everybody for watching. If you have any comments on my strategies, feel free to um, drop them in the in the comments below. I'd love to chat with you a little bit about them. Okay, thanks a lot. Have a great day.